Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have a brand new guest. His name is Ravi Huda. Before I explain a little bit more about what this hangout is all about, let us welcome Ravi Huda to P Guru's channel. Ravi ji, welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you, Sri ji. Thank you for having me on your channel. I really appreciate it. Dhanyawad. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, viewers. this is uh, a new type of hangout that we are going to have because we are reaching out to ravi ji who resides in canada uh, i'm not sure exactly if he resides in the city of toronto or a suburb most likely somewhere in that area but what sri ravi does is he is a real estate broker and for those of you who don't understand what a real estate broker does let me just explain it to you in a few sentences i hope you will bear with me for taking your time rather than letting me have the speaker of the day speak so a real estate broker is somebody who is he is trying to bring a buyer and uh, a seller together for selling a property so the real estate broker is something like a middleman sometimes he represents the buyer sometimes he represents the seller and in some special cases it is allowed in the united states he can do both also now the important thing that the real estate broker has is his um you know uh, credibility his his credibility is very important because he needs to tell whoever he is representing the real truth about what the property they are buying or selling and make sure that at the end of the day both parties go away happy and satisfied and for this the real estate broker gets a small commission we will not going to we are not going to go into all these things the reason i brought this explanation is i wanted our viewers across the world to understand how real estate in uh, us and canada and many other countries works and what the role of the real estate broker is so see ravi huda is a real estate broker was working with a real estate firm called remax r e m a x now there are many such companies in india in us and canada there is 20th uh, 21st century or 20th century and and uh, i i can go on and on so the point here is these companies usually have like a shared office space where the real estate brokers will sit and they have access to resources such as you know who is doing what some comparative listings and all sorts of things to help let the real estate broker to make the sale a little bit easier i you could add a little bit more ravi ji when it's your turn but i want you to uh, tell our viewers what you what happened and how things are playing out because this is a very interesting story and i want you to understand that this is another step in the attempted islamization of a country by using fake narratives of islamophobia ravi ji take it away thank you shri ji for uh, putting it very aptly about real estate agents i would just like to add we are like facilitators as you rightly put and uh, we bring uh, buyers and sellers together sometimes helping buyers find a suitable property depending on their affordability helping them in the pre approval process and sellers market their properties by getting it in uh, staged and you know uh, priced according to the market situation so i uh, actually think of myself as uh, as somebody who's helping others realize uh, uh, their goals what they want to do if they're looking to buy buy a suitable property and if they're looking to sell try and get them the maximum possible by uh, putting it out there in the market so uh, coming to the incident that we are talking about you know uh, recently i was uh, completely taken aback and also because like everybody else like professionals we go about our lives in a very normal way uh, doing day to day mundane things and you know seldom we get into things and not being that interested in uh, politics apart from being a you know a, a voter in my constituency here in election Uh, for all the local representatives, so we take as much in, as interest as every anywhere else. Like you would read the news and you know go on Twitter and see what's going on. And recently, what uh, happened was uh, there was uh, an exemption given to noise bylaw to allow uh, use of public speakers on top of uh, uh, mosques 
to uh, 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 broadcast uh, prayers, right? So uh, I tweeted, and this tweet was uh, by the mayor, Patrick Brown, uh, of the city of uh, Brampton, where I reside in. And um, I was an avid supporter of uh, Patrick Brown. And you know, my tweet was uh, directed towards him that, you know, uh, and it was an objection not to the prayers, right? It's, it's good. Everybody praying is much better than people fighting with each other. But the, the specific part of the exemption to bylaw where it allows to broadcast it over speakers and uh, i just objected and uh, you know uh, in hindsight if i see my tweet could be viewed as being sarcastic possibly uh, you know uh, something uh, stark but it was all all it meant was that we do not have to go back to regressive practices or times where such practices were uh, prevalent right uh, because we have applications in our phones to remind us of what we want to do. And surprisingly, and this was a, a really big surprise to me because I'm not a big political figure or a famous personality. You know, you would just say a average Joe just going by his life, you know, who decided to tweet, just ask the mayor a question that uh, are th what are the next steps you're going to do? And it was more in anguish to an exemption and bylaw. But it was taken apart in isolation. And uh, there was uh, a huge attempt by some vested groups, and these groups were pretty organized to, uh, you know, uh, paint me as a as an Islamophobe, if I, for a better word, because that's what's being used to, uh, you know, uh, silence people or label them to, you know, sometimes bully them into believing. And I was thinking. Uh, you know, uh, what is it that I have to fear from Islam? Because literally, if you think Islamophobe means who has a phobia of Islam. So I have nothing to fear of Islam. Like, uh, I am not in uh, in a direct confrontation with anybody. I have friends from um, even Muslim communities, educated people, well-read, well-thought, you know, who I sit with, have friends and clients. And I, I was taken aback when I was suddenly labeled. And then I realized that it's a vested group who wants to divide the society, the, the people who are uh, living in civilized world and uh, mostly together to divide them into certain groups and silence these, uh, you know, if you if you're against an idea or, or a bylaw or a law, then they would find some reason to silence you. So this was the reason that they found to silence me by targeting me and uh, you know uh, it, i'll go more about it after uh, you know if you have a question or anything you need to comment please go ahead Ye yes so so Ravi, um you know people can say that the churches are allowed to uh, ring their bells however my not to my knowledge the the bell ringing at churches takes place perhaps infrequently twice a year typically sometimes some churches do ring bells for services i don't know what the frequency of that is but suffice to say it is a fairly infrequent occurrence in the case of azan what is it sir the azan uh, exemption was supposed to be also temporary but where we've seen in some places uh, uh, the exemption for the noise bylaw has been extended as well like people have asked for longer extension and again like i reiterate it's not so much about the azan right if somebody wants to say the azan or pray in their own way which, which is good if they want to pray it's it's good i like i said more people praying is better than they fighting with each other but to say that i pray i like to uh, like i do uh, follow vedic sanatan padati and i do havan so that doesn't mean that I'll start to do havan in the middle of the street and put my own speakers on and then, uh, you know, let the community know that I am supposed to have havan twice a day, yagya twice a day. And it's supposed to be done in, in, a, uh, in a certain havan kun that I make, it, make a havan kun now in the middle of the community. And then uh, I start to do that because uh, we, we have all our rights and we should, you know, to practice our religion and practice it without fear but at the same time everybody else has the has the right to say and speak up if they feel that certain things are intrusive so my right to do something uh, stops when that right kind of inhibits 
or uh, kind of uh, troubles the person next to me so uh, you know that that is a common sense civil logic so if in this civil society if we are not able to discuss like uh, you know uh, normal common sense people then i don't know where we are heading so we don't have to label each other anything to have a discussion so if the discussion is there if there is something going on but that didn't take place what happened was uh, trying to paint uh, you know uh, victimhood kind of a thing they made a victim out of me uh, they the whole group put out my personal information of the place that i work my email my phone number the school that i volunteered with you know and uh, what did i do in the school i i used to used to volunteer there for the children like go and make pancakes facilitate their programs be part of the parent teachers association it wasn't like i was getting a six figure job there but it was close to my heart because um, i like to volunteer in the community and apart from that i i had uh, facilitated certain programs for kids and everything there too and i do that everywhere wherever i can and uh, that's our philosophy as uh, you know uh, citizens as hindus we we believe in giving back to the community that we live in and it does not have any political or any religious connotations of wanting to have a superior hold on any institution or any party or any you know create my own ideology which is superior to others but what i went through was uh, i wasn't uh, prepared for like uh, numerous phone calls threats to me uh, saying that my kids and my family will be butchered on the streets right and uh, so in in a way it it and that i didn't even come out with this is what we are discussing now i got numerous messages my wife got messages saying why you married to this guy so imagine you know i know she would agree you know because all <laughs> we've we've been married for uh, uh, a long time now so every wife or husband sometimes feel that feels that way but you know she didn't need to be coaxed by these people though she she thankfully you know and she trusts me that uh, i am not against anyone and we are part of a civil society where this kind of discourse should be welcomed where you discuss and nobody is above criticism especially by laws and laws which are coming in making and uh, you know and politicians will divide us those politicians would like us to be divided into certain vote bank groups and they would uh, you know build on that so it is up to us not to go and play that route and be confined in religious ideologies and in certain cases and you know uh, and some people would like play play along with that too because that's their vested motives and ideas to do that so but what does it speak of people who are educated are emailing and saying stuff and sending messages to me and say, calling me i could just laugh on them you know it's it's just uh, because uh, it just shows the 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 kind of background in a way you're trying to tell me that we are good and we are trying to do good but in in a way the example that has been said is not good in any way so uh, you know uh, apart from that i could uh, it's it's just sense of despair that uh, today society's problem is not certain individuals or western groups organized who are trying to create this these fissures and you know divisions and you know are trying to propagate a certain thought or ideology but the problem is with more the majority of the people would not like to speak up and uh, this this kind of state status is is uh, is counterproductive to our democracy and our society right well that is true and uh, i think um, viewers it gets worse from here on and i would want uh, sri ravi ji to explain in what happened after this see at the at up until this point you are talking about harassment of indirect and direct there was no need for someone to go and based on a tweet to go and rake up his background where he uh, volunteers and so on and so forth and i look at it in a very different way mr ravi huda needs to network with people and networking can be done very effectively by participating in school events what is wrong in that this is something that i see is a perfectly legal perfectly acceptable way for mr ravi huda because he has to make friends he has to strike friendships and there is nothing wrong in him volunteering in uh, in school and i would encourage every parent to volunteer because i have done it myself it is a very 
a very nice thing knowing about the you know progress of your child and how the growth happens and helping other children this is a great idea i mean one time i had uh, shown how you patch a bicycle uh, tire a, a tube and and this is very essential st stuff because fifth grade sixth grade children they need to understand what to do if they are going biking and they have a flat so things like this are simple things these are very important though as a member of a society to try and do that. So, Ravi ji, I am completely in uh, alignment with you on what you've been doing. And it's really unfortunate that one tweet partially taken out of context, and then they made a big deal out of it. So please continue, sir. Yeah, it seems they, it seems uh, it was designed to, uh, you know, uh, by certain vested groups to make it seem like an example what would happen if you raise your voice against uh, any anything that you do not agree with in this society and which is very unfortunate so uh, the brokerage that i was associated with uh, got multiple emails phone calls and uh, you know the brokerage terminated my contract right and which was again surprising the school principal the school i was associated with uh, uh, said they are doing an investigation right so i said okay i agree with the investigation and uh, uh, if there's any help, assistance that you need from me to help you with the investigation, let me know. And the next thing I have to see within two hours is a tweet saying that the Islamophobic comments are not welcome, and uh, we have this, uh, that he he has been removed from the the school council chair. So I'm not sure how my comments, first of all, like uh, were construed to be Islamophobic because I did not say anything about Islam. I did not say anything about any religious uh, uh, individual, uh, Muslims for that matter. I did not say anything about anybody because this is again perception. The region that I come from, also I belong to uh, Haryana and certain parts of Haryana, people wear dress, dress coats where their clothes are different. They are covered from head to toe, right? They have uh, uh, domestic animals that they make use of from cow, camel, goats, and I've ridden camels too. So it doesn't have to be associated just because it suits you to say that oh he it, if he said something it has to be against this particular community and we have to build on that narrative to create a, a thing that oh somebody has said against this now we need to hound this guy because he does not support the thing that uh, certain people want to do a lot of people even in the in the in the muslim community or the islamic community pray differently or do different things or even in Hindu community they do, do different things They do not agree on the same things all the time and we have discussions so it seemed like it was more like uh, Hindu phobia like because my name was Ravi and I picked up this uh, this bylaw thing I had to be against Islam because there's no other way I cannot be a sensible guy I have to be a, a, a Hin Hindu kind of a fanatic guy because uh, my name is Ravi and I'm speaking about a bylaw, so it has to be against Islam and Muslims. So that is how it has been portrayed and put me in a straight jacket and then said, look, we found an Islamophobe. He's an Islamophobic gal, uh, guy. Now let's let's just uh, hand it him. So uh, that's what happened. Like everybody, I became a fair game. It's, it's established now that, you know, they don't want to talk to me if I'm Islamophobe or not, but they made up their mind because that was put out. Oh, he's an Islamophobe. No one, because he made this comment against the bylaw, he's an Islamophobe. Now everybody go attack him. So they send emails to the school principal. They send broker, Remax, tag me on the Twitter, and, you know, incessant phone, phone calls to me through my websites and stuff. All I could do was actually be uh, perplexed, actually, because I'm not that an important guy, right? I'm not a, I'm, I'm just your everyday Joe who goes about his life trying to sell house to feed his family and, you know, make a living. And I do volunteer, right, like everybody else, which I think is the right thing to do. So uh, this was, this actually came more as a surprise. And uh, it also brought about, uh, you know, a certain sense that our society has reached the point where uh, common sense discourse is vanishing quickly, right? The politicians are also kind of, uh, you know, helping going that route, then, you know, the, the, the freedom that we enjoy in civil society to speak our minds freely without being labeled of uh, the fear of being labeled anything, right? 
our topic of discussion should not be now somebody was i saw on twitter that i am i'm supposed to be a hindu fanatic guy and uh, but the uh, then i was thinking but i go to costco more often than the temple so i should be uh, a costco guy than the hindu hindu fanatic guy i'm a hindu practicing hindu but i go more often to costco to do shopping or walmart right so if they were to find that uh, pattern they would find that i'm being supported by costco and walmart so uh, that's the kind of thing happens if you don't agree then you try to look for the differences to uh, you know build on and uh, this is what they were building on what do i do where do i go what do i eat so probably that's the reason why he's opposing this bylaw so nobody wanted to talk about the bylaw anymore it was just about me being an islamophobe which was incorrect right so i'm not against anyone i'm for everyone so without i'm not saying that you have to listen to my music my stuff it's just like we live in the neighborhood i like certain music my neighbor doesn't like that kind of music so if i like it i was to go and play it in the in the backyard he's going to object to it so i'm saying no you are against uh, hindu you are against the hindu music right and then i try to play on that oh you are against hindus and uh, uh, you know uh, coincidentally my neighbor is a, is a muslim guy and we have good relations he's he's, he's from uh, uh, you know uh, we never had these problems and it's a common understanding if i am having a party in the back backyard kind of a thing they never make that noises our backyards are close by it's not like states we don't have really big lots and stuff so uh, it's pretty okay but uh, yeah so we never have faced these uh, problems my clients never accused me of anything like this that i'm against them they have good good things to say about me from all communities and uh, this was this came as a big surprise but it shows the and in view of the current situations that we are seeing developments that we are seeing these days you know it it is more like a political uh, stunts which certain groups are playing than anything to do with any democratic rights or any anything else i have a few questions for you ravi ji did sure. the school uh, try to contact you before uh, taking you off of the panel uh the only thing that the school did was i received a call from the school principal mm -hmm. where we discussed and uh, she said did you tweet this this twitter mm -hmm. i got a, a call and few emails about this i said yes i did right but it wasn't directed towards any community or anything i explained myself and i said uh because it was construed as being against uh, you know not that was the intention again but it was uh, you know deliberately being misconstrued to be against particular community and stuff because it had to fit that strat jack that jacket kind of a thing where it has to be labeled because for it to be labeled something and hound me it has to meet a certain criteria so they were trying to fit it in there oh this guy is an islamophobic and this is why he's doing this right so uh, coming back to the principal that's all i got a call and i spoke with her and i said this is what it is and i said i'll i'll uh, you know cooperate with the with any investigation that you have but the next thing i see is a tweet going on twitter which was again a big surprise to me i don't know how fast an investigation goes without getting any inputs in written from the other guy and then uh, i got a letter saying oh you you being removed from the this position for this long you know and you cannot participate in any it's it's not that there was anything that i was getting paid from there but it i've been volunteering for as long as my kids have been there right i have been going to the school arranging stuff for the uh, the teachers as well doing teachers appreciation day why it wasn't a, a stuff that i want the teachers to be uh, specially favorable to my child because i want a good connection like a guru and shishya teacher and student connection between them because uh, sometimes uh, a lot of teachers uh, go their works go unappreciated so if we build this kind of a thing and other th other uh, confidence building activities that we do in school encourage volunteering if children see their parents volunteering they also imbibe those same qualities so that was the idea but uh, i guess that was not to be well um see there are several things that are uh, happening here ravi ji and this is for the benefit of somebody from the school district who see who would i'm hoping watch this thing as well as for the remax people in your area in brampton who might watch it this is something like a pattern now 
This is not happening just in Canada. It is happening in United Kingdom. It's happening in Western Europe. It is happening in the United States also. These things are very planned. They all have the same playbook, the same set of plays. And this is too, too, too obvious. Always the role is to play one of a victimhood, to try and take advantage of your sense of fairness. And, and by showing 50 people coming and talking to you, thinking, oh my God, the 50 people outraged by this. And, and what about Mr. Ravi? He has just talked talk to me on the phone. The silent majority hasn't come and supported Ravi. And therefore, perhaps I should take Ravi off of the council. So I'm just saying how the thing might have played out. But I think the most important thing here that everyone needs to remember is when somebody is playing victimhood, it is difficult to see it unless you peel the layers a little bit more and see for what it really is. First thing that everyone must understand is playing something on the loudspeaker is noise pollution. Now, if there may be a decibel limit, there may be number of times you have to play, but if the neighborhood complains, then the city must act on it. I'll tell you how many ways this affects it. If there is noise pollution, the value of your home goes down. Please remember that. Also remember that if a certain person is being kicked out of a voluntary position in a school council, what kind of message do the rest of the people, after all, he's going to go and talk to his people. They might say that, oh my God, this is how this school is leaning. I'm going to take my child out of here. So you suddenly are going to have a fall in the valuation of prices. I'm being brutally frank here, guys. I've seen this happen far too many times in the US that I cannot but express my anguish at taking something that is such a minor thing, taking it out of context and then making it to the whole world. I mean, this, this story about you, sir, came in Indian newspapers. And, and, and I'm amazed that you know somebody was ready to go with the story on there also. And whatever it is, the truth here is somebody needs to do their homework. And just because someone is showing you numbers to say that all these people are outraged doesn't cut it. And I think the school board owed it to you to give a fair hearing on your side of the story. After all, the tweet is there black and white. People can read it and make their own decisions. And and now let's take on to the next level. What happened at Remax, sir? Remax, the, the broker said that, uh, oh, I've been receiving emails. And uh, I told him it's uh, because I, I was, uh, when I was taken aback, I was sitting back and watching who's doing what. So it seemed like there were Twitter accounts, you know, uh, with one follower or zero followers who was following two people. Like mostly it seemed like uh, uh, almost 85% of the or even 90% of the Twitter accounts who were tagging and retweeting and doing these kind of things seemed like fake accounts. So uh, I'm not sure how anybody could take the tagging of tweets and uh, that seriously. So there was a role played by the, the the mayor here as well, right? So the mayor was quick to appreciate, uh, you know, the action taken by uh, the Remax. Now, what Remax did was the broker panicked. He thought there's uh, uh, his business is going there, and this, uh, you know, it's it's everybody's, uh, you know, whosoever is calling him, though they might not have done any business with him, right? The people were sending an email, so it seemed like that all his business was going south. So uh, he decided to terminate the relationship. And uh, though there was a notice period that he's supposed to give, we have a contract uh, that you have to follow. And again, going on the side of, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, uh, playing devil's advocate, if you would, saying if I'm an Islamophobe, or I made an Islamophobic tweet, which I did not, uh, there are uh, venues to address that. There are disciplinary measures which you can do. There's progressive disciplines, right? It's not, oh, you do one tweet and you've been branded and as an as a person and you're gone. That's it. So that doesn't work uh, in any profession that way. You are asked for an explanation. You give it. If you're not, you're supposed to do some courses or take other steps, uh, progressive uh, steps. And then uh, if you continue to do that, if you continue to find that I am a 
you know, guy who takes on a certain community with impunity and that's all I do for a living except for real estate, you know, then you go out to a ne next step. But uh, he decided to terminate the relationship and, uh, you know, and suddenly now I'm uh, out of uh, my profession, what I'm supposed to do, right? And then I'm being hounded by these numerous phone calls, unknown people who I don't even know. I don't know how they were affected. But these were in certain groups. I went in these groups and I, and I have friends in all communities, right? I have friends and even in good friends in Muslim communities too. And they told me that my number, my information is circulating in those groups and they are encouraging people to hound me. And they, if they were to, uh, you know, some of them did stand up, say something, no, this is not good. I know this guy. He's not like this. He's not against... Uh, uh, religion or anything he's just uh, expressing his views they started to hound those people right saying oh you are that you are a traitor and you are that kind of person and stuff so uh, like i said uh, the unfortunate part is uh, the these vested interests are more organized than uh, than the common people right people who want to go about their business and respect law respect democracy and freedom for everyone right Yes, I mean, that's why I'm trying to tell uh, people who are watching this video that there is a plan. This is the same playbook that has been played out in many countries. And you need to understand why this is happening. And you have to get to the bottom of it. And I would not go by these just outside optics to make decisions. Because when the truth comes out, those who made these mistakes are going to really, really feel sorry. Now, I, I'm speaking for the majority community, the silent majority, which most countries say the Indian Americans are the model minority because they come to the new country that they take, they work their butt off, they work very hard, they bring high paying jobs, they make sure that their children are brought up in the most law abiding manner and they never try to impose their political views their religious views on anybody else, whatever they do, they do it within the four confines of their home or they go to a temple to pray. Beyond that, the Indian American silent majority, which constitutes, I'm sure, even a fair say, a majority in the neighborhoods of Toronto, they all need to, you need to make your voice heard. You need to speak up for Ravi Huda because I don't think Mr. Ravi has done anything wrong. In fact, he is fully within his rights to express his thoughts. It's a free country. Anybody can say anything they want, especially if the Azan goes off at 4 a.m. in the morning and you did a late, you did a late night shift and, and came to sleep at 2 a.m. That is not very nice way to, you know, uh, you know, uh, be rudely woken up. There are some implications to this. Perhaps the mayor is unaware of how many times Azan gets played, at what times of the day Azan gets played, but when the reality hits you, by God, you will know what it what you have done. So, Ravi, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on this uh, panel, for this hangout for uh, for our viewers. And I'm sure, viewers, you're going to see this thing played out more and more. I have one other instance in the same uh, topic, in the same area of Toronto, and I'm trying to reach that person also. You'll be hearing from that person too. And you're probably reading in the newspapers about what is happening in Cisco, and we are trying to get to the bottom of that one too. So thank you very much, Ravi ji, and namaskar, and all the best. Namaste. Dhaniwad. Thank you. Dhaniwad.